Hey, what's up? This is Trey Pierce, audio engineer, digital director, director of financial planning and analysis, senior creative director of AR, program director, morning show host, and you're listening to the Springboard, 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 Springboard Music Podcast. We get the privilege to work with Michael W. Spoon, CC Wines, uh, Robert Deaton, who's a creator, executive producer of the CMA Awards and Billboard Music Awards and Nashville's Big Bash. And, so many things. God's given each of them and wired them different. In this episode, Greg uncovers some really incredible, sometimes painful truths. I love that Greg is so intentional in making sure that the soul of whoever he encounters is edified and not just his business. I believe that music, just like it led into battle, just like it led Jesus into the city will lead revival. And so music will be that leader. So I think if as an industry, or if this is for 18 to 24 year olds that are coming in to be part of this, I would hope they would feel the weight of that. This isn't a trite kind of thing. This is an opportunity or maybe a calling, which can freak people out sometimes, but I believe we work with a lot of people who are called staff as well as artists, writers, to accomplish a mission. So that's why I always say I'm in vocational ministry. My my life is, this is how I've provided for my family. We have a 32-year-old and a 30-year-old, 30 year two girls. They are, their life has been century. All they know is dad in the music business as his living. And it's a ministry fulfillment because of the talent we get to work with. So we've, you see those moments where you're like, wow, look how music moved that person. Look how God showed up in that moment. If we lose sight of that, that's what I would encourage your 18 to 24 year olds is I hope you love music. And I hope if you're getting in the faith music business, which it is a business, I hope you feel that responsibility of this as a carrier of good news. The hope, the hope of good news for someone. It will touch somebody at a moment when nothing else would touch it. Not a word, not a cons- somebody can trying to console, but that music crept in at a place and gave comfort. That's, that's exciting to me. Where do I go from that? Because that's so exciting to me. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that's a incredible. And a privilege. Yeah. That we get to do. But we get drugged down into the day to day. You know, we it's like people say, Why'd you go on the road? Well, I had to go get another shot of juice, right? I had to go out and experience what's happening live. So that would help me for that next eight weeks while you're in the grind of it. Because it takes grind, it takes the business, it takes contracts, it takes things that aren't ministry at all. And for some people, this will be too ministry for them. They're like, well, that's not the same business I'm in. And that's okay. We're all somewhere on this spectrum. I'm but just we all have to have a reason why we do something too. The why. And if you can't answer that why every day, then I'd be better off doing something different. Because your path has taken a lot of twists and turns since the early days at Forefront and being the president and, um, you know, helping launch one of my personal favorites, Stacey Rico's career. Mm -hmm. Um, Then you left and did some secular work with, you know, Coldplay. Janet Jackson, I think, is in that list. And then you did something people only dream about which is taking a 65 day sabbatical and traveling the world with your family. We did. And then you took on managing um and now you're a partner at the MWS group which I just how do we talk about all of that? You have had so many experiences and careers that I feel like we could do an episode on each season and get so much value from. It was a privilege. I will say that. I mean, I, again, I've loved each season when, once the business changed and I went inside of EMI proper 
that was how I worked with Coldplay and Janet Jackson and Corinne Bailey Ray and um, all these artists because they would get on the global priority team and we got Stacy on the global priority team. So on behalf wow. of EMICMG, I got to serve on that team that was made up of our companies from around the world. And when those artists got chosen, then you would help look at that globally. So I didn't, just to be clear, I didn't manage any of those acts. I got to work with those acts as part of the global priority team at EMI at that time with one of my dear friends, Mathieu Prevost Laureat, uh, who just is a French man who lived in England, who caught a vision. And when you say Stacy, that was a great privilege. I got to meet him. It was a cool intersection while I was in London. He was just coming on. Stacy, I was able to get Stacy to him. He became passionate about that. And then she ended up making the priority list. And then, you know, was two and a half times platinum in Japan and gold in so many countries. And uh, again, a song that Kevin Kadish wrote with Lucy Woodward, More to Life, was that big single that went around the world. And Kevin also wrote, who's a great writer here in town, uh, Kevin Kadish, uh, just a good friend and a great talent. And he also wrote Stuck with Stacey Arico. I remember just, these songs. And then I'll pull this all the way around real quick so it ties to the sabbatical. So then I decide, I really felt God was pushing me to exit. Um, Bill Hearn, again, great friend. We were able to work through that because I still owe time. Um, and it was a great um, next season. I did a quiet retreat with our friend Al Andrews from Porter's Call. I love Al Andrews. I'm a big we fan love of Porter's, Porter's Call. Call. Pam and I have been uh, we're, you know, supporters of Porter's Call since the beginning, and we believe in it as its mission, as its why. You know, that these artists, if they're not healthy, they have nothing to say. And so they have to be healthy to go. And so I never feel like we're um, asking, if I ask anybody to contribute to Porter's Call, I'm asking them to invest because more than likely they're benefiting from the health of the artists and Al and that team help keep artists healthy. So we did this. And then during that, I journaled and I wrote this trip out, what I thought we would do as a family. And so the summer of 07, we did a 65 day trip, five continents around the world. We called it the Ham Fam Adventure because it wasn't a vacation. I hope Steam you made shirts. t-shirts because that's amazing. We did. We had a t-shirt that was Ham Fam Adventure. Our entry was, my girls were 14 and 16, just shy of 17 and 15. And they had to journal. So we had four journals. We all had to journal. That was our daily entry uh, to doing this trip. And uh, it was great because we got to serve in an orphanage in China, and then we checked in the Four Seasons in Shanghai. And then we were with Compassion International at an AIDS work in Africa, in Kenya. And then we checked in a five-star safari on the Serengeti, and it was back and forth. And um, it was a great privilege that we got to do. I will say we got to Cape Town, South Africa, and we were in a little pub having lunch, and Stacy Rico, More to Life, came on the overhead. Get so out. you got to think, through this season, I'm like, God, am I done? Or am I going to pick music back up or not? And that I heard it. And so I texted her dad, Dean Rico, that night. And when we woke up the next morning, he said, Stacy Rico is in Cape Town, South Africa at an orphanage. What? I was like, okay, Pam. This is crazy. And so we connect and we go to that same pub 24 hours later and we have lunch with Stacey Rico, my family and Stacey. And for me, That's it was wild. like, God, just saying you're not done. Uh, that was a, that was my nudge. Uh, that and when we were in Singapore, Bob Ezrin, who produced Pink Floyd, The Wall and all the Alice Cooper records, the Kiss records. and and came in um, to Live Nation artists when they were starting the thing with Madonna and Shakira and Nickelback and Rolling Stones touring and Zach Brown band. And so I came into that because I talked to Bob that night from Singapore and I wrote in my journal, this is the first time I feel like I'm maybe not done. I'm supposed to do something else. 
in the and then this was like the punctuation point when that whole thing happened with Stacy. And uh, so I think again, I think if we're just looking, God's always showing. Are we perceiving? You know, um, I, I hope that's what I would hope. I hope I will live my life others focused. I hope I will always know that I'm arriving, that we don't arrive. I would hope that I don't believe my own press clippings, you know, that we just live with our why centric. If the why stays centric, then we're not going to become too about self because we'll keep going back to the why. And we all have, I, I would challenge that we all have a why, whether you know it or not. A we all why. have a motivator. Absolutely. And so it's how you live that out. It's like, so any of these, again, I keep going back to, you said the target is 18 to 24 year olds who are in that maybe think that they want this as a career. And I will just tell you from experience and experience of seeing others, don't lose your passion in the process of pursuing your passion. That's so good. It happens over and over and over. And whether it's an artist, whether it's someone in the business, whether it's, man, this is my life dream. This wasn't my life dream. And I know a lot of times when I say that, people are like, well, that's not fair because it is my life dream. He just taken it very lightly. Mm. No, I just, I think you got to be open to what God is doing. Maybe you're pursuing this. And as you get into it more, you realize I was pursuing the idea of that. I'm not wired for that. Or maybe I was pursuing the what I thought was the fun of that. But look, this is not all fun. And we see right. people at their best and we see people at their worst. That's who God's entrusted us with. And we're trying to, these are artisans that God's given this unbelievable gift. We get the privilege to work with Michael W. Smith, C.C. Winans. Uh, Robert Deaton, who's a creator, executive producer of the CMA Awards and Billboard Music Awards and Nashville's Big Bash and so many things. God's given each of them and wired them differently. I sure. would just say, I feel like we are an artist development company. We're artist developers. Yeah, manager as a role traditionally is the most intimate relationship to an artist because you touch everything. You see, you know, they have agents that do this and they have labels that do this they have publishers that do this they have business managers that do that we kind of are looking at everything strategy to fulfillment to touring to resources wow. to publishing so you're touching every aspect i just think manager a lot of time has a it can have a connotation that i don't always like you know when you see it portrayed a lot of times we're about artisans and if their hearts are healthy, they're going to probably produce the most. And if we focus on transformation, I think transaction will follow. If yeah. we just focus on the transaction, it doesn't necessarily mean transformation is happening. So for me, for us, what we're trying to do is make that the focal and then let transaction follow. Be good business people. I'm not saying, oh, we're just going to float through life and just try to be, you know, it's no <laughs> it's strategy. It's rely true. on a transaction coming through. But no, yeah, it's a business. And make the right decisions and in making the right decisions that are focused on our why and fulfilling the why of the talent we've been entrusted with and let them continue. That's why I love working with Cece and Michael and Steven who are legacy artists who've been doing it a long time. I would call good to great artists, right? They're not perfect in any means. None of us are. And yet they've consistently survived success. They've consistently been relevant. They've consistently sought God to to help them get the next thing. And Cece's coming off of her maybe biggest year of her career as a solo, not her and BB, but as Cece won right. this year. And it's like, that's God. That's not, that's not us being smart. That's not, it's God 
being involved at this moment for his purposes that we got to be part of. That's cool to me. I love that. We've Privilege. walked through your career and you've been here since the eighties. Like you all have grown through this industry together and it's inspiring for me who's only been in the industry about, you know, a little less than six years to see, okay, the relationships that I build now could grow mm -hmm. with me through my career and we can partner again down the road into something just as inspirational and impactful and helpful to people. You want to do your life with people that you want to do it, you know, with your it's like sometimes we work with people or around people because it's the moment. And I can, I, I'm good with everybody. I mean, I can pretty much ebb and flow with anything. At the end of the day, you want to, I want to work with people that I know have my back because I want to have their back. I want to work with people that says, that says we're all going one direction and we know that direction is declared and it's not fighting going the other way. Because if, when we get in our own fiefdoms, then you can only be as big as that. And mm -hmm. so I'll give you one more analogy and you'll have to fact check it because I won't have it exact. But the goose, the single goose can fly 30 miles an hour. The champion goose, the Olympian goose can fly 30 miles an hour. But the flock of geese can fly 72 miles an hour. What? So, and the same leader in that flock of geese, you can look it up, falls out and somebody else leads because he because that lead goose is getting the biggest part of the brunt of the wind and then these back here are having a little less effort because they're part of the aerodynamic of it but the principle being they're all going the same way and together they're going quicker and so i would say to you know another person in our industry jeff mosley so we have cc with fair trade and I tell that team we're every other week on a call and I try to over remind us because I think it's very special. Whether we would have had success with CC Winans or not, the way that team that we work together, our team and their team, diverse, whether it's economic or racial diversity or gender diversity, it's a diverse makeup of a team. And we all worked in unison to go one direction on her behalf. That was a cool to me, a part whether we had success or not. And we had success, that's icing. It was already success to me that this was working that seamlessly. Because I think it's a beautiful picture. There has been so much wisdom. And I said it at the beginning of this interview that mm -hmm. I was going to be you know, very impacted just from this connection. And um, I have, I can't wait to listen through again and again and just take all of these nuggets from um, just your decades of really wisdom building um, and wisdom gathering and the fact that you would bestow it here. I'm so grateful. I have one last question that I ask everybody about when we wrap up this interview and all you right. kind of already hinted to the answer. All right. Do you believe you're living the dream? Today, I believe I'm living the dream that God's put in front of me today. Yes. Um, I'm excited at this point in life. Uh, it would be easy to be very callous. Uh, this industry. And that's what I, again, I go back to who this is for. Um, you don't enter this. It's a calling. Anything you do in life, you need to know you're in it and don't let others force you to it. You got to know it for yourself. This is what you're supposed to do. And so it, but it's not all roses. It's, it's not all negative. It's somewhere there in the middle. And so you got to have tenacity to do it. So I would say, yes, for this season right now, I feel very energized about what God's doing and what we get to be part of and uh, the successes we're having, um, again, that are long-term relationships that get to come back together. And so uh, if it was a yes and no answer, yes is the answer. If it had a caveat to it, then you can add some of my uh, 
uh, reasoning behind it. But there's been times where I would say, no, I'm not living the dream. I'm surviving. I'm not thriving. I'm just getting by. That season where we were in this decline or when God's saying maybe, hey, I want you to let go. Letting go is very difficult. It's our identity. And again, I would say to these, the audience that maybe want this to be their career, don't let this become your identity. This is just a thing. Your identity is you. When you just say to somebody, hey, I'm Greg Ham." And when I left EMI, that was, I would say that six months was like, even though I thought it wasn't my identity, it was more than I let on. We and have so that when in it common. wasn't Greg Ham, <laughs> president of Forefront Records, or Greg Ham, EMI, or but just Greg Ham. That's cool when you can just say, because we're enough right there without anything else. And that's true, right? When you answer the phone or you sign an email or you leave a voicemail or you introduce yourself to somebody in this industry, it is, you want to say where you're from because it's a connector point. Yeah. And when you don't have that anymore, it's jarring. Yeah. Yeah. It can be. Well, and at the same time, it's like, I think there's so much health and, uh, and freedom and freedom. Yeah. Cause we're not bound by it. And that's what everybody said. What's the biggest thing when you left? What was your, I said, letting go is hard. And like, we're on the rock wall and we're, we're there and we're good. And you can almost say I'm, I'm safe. Why would I want to let go? Because it takes letting go to move. So if you're going to try to go higher or lateral or even lower for a season, it takes letting go to be able to move. The stuck. I think a lot of times people are just stuck. It's like, I think if you're, again, arriving, realizing that we won't arrive on this earth. We're arriving every day. There's not a day goes by that I don't learn something. And I don't think we will ever get to a non-learning spot here. When we get to heaven, I think then that's that time of like, we will know. But until then, I think we're always arriving. And I like that. And and when you're arriving, what happens? I love these GPSs, uh, recalculating route. Yes. It's like, right. So it doesn't mean it's like, oh, I made a wrong <laughs> turn. I'm arriving, but I made a wrong turn. So what do we do? We recalculate the route. That's okay. I, I just want to, I want to try to, and again, I wish I could say I'm living it at the level I can portray it. You know, I can say it and I know it. And I can tell you there's mornings where I'm like, oh, what's today going to be? Because if we would have arrived, then I would know what today's going to be. But we're arrived. There's something that Greg said in the midst of this interview, which was don't lose your passion in the process of pursuing your passion. I'm going to say that again. Don't lose your passion in the process of pursuing your passion. There have been so many times where I have chased down something that was a vision and something that excited me only to realize the second something isn't super glamorous or fun anymore, I don't enjoy it anymore. Case in point, I really don't enjoy doing the post-production of these podcast episodes. But my goodness, what's the point of doing a podcast if it's not turned out well? And so I have to be really intentional of remembering that why, why I'm doing this to keep me motivated when it's really easy to lose that passion. So Greg's message in this episode really resonated with me and I hope it resonated with you. I cannot wait to hear some of your takeaways from it. I'm Rachel Hessian, your host of the Springboard Music Podcast.